Work so you can please God. Your work glorifies God. Listen to this great verse, 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whether, therefore, ye eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God, no matter what you do, and everything in between. Whether you eat, drink, and everything you do in between, do everything you can to the glory of God. Don't let anything be done without excellence. Don't let anything be done without excellence. Did you hear me, church? Do everything that you do to the glory of God. Don't ever settle for good enough. That's, I hate that attitude. Oh, this is fine. It'll be, it'll be fine. Is it good? You don't work for me and you don't work for your neighbor. You work to glorify God. One of the questions that I ask, we have uh, uh, business meetings, <clears throat> theoretically every Monday, though it doesn't always happen. Usually it's once every three weeks. But one of the questions that I ask the staff when we sit down, one of the first questions I ask, what can we do better? We will, we have, we will never arrive but we always have to shoot for doing something better than what we've always done in the past because we don't serve me. We don't serve each other. We serve God. There's a reason why we shoot for excellence. Whatever you do, do to the glory of God. Do it as if you have God standing there in front of you and you are working directly for him. Most times what happens, friends, is, is just true. We think that we're there to serve our boss. Now, we work for our boss, but we serve the Lord. Therefore, whatsoever we do, do it to the glory of God. Make sure that we don't do things half-heartedly. And that's the next point, is don't only, do, your work pleases God. Work, your work glorifies God, and your work serves God. And he says, the servants uh, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as man pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Now we're going to talk about that verse next week. But this is the one I want to get to. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord. And not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. You don't work for me. You work for God. Ultimately. You serve him. We are his servants. He is our master. And when you work, you're working to please him. Now let me say this in conclusion. Let me say this in conclusion. This is important. Get this. Work now because there's going to come a time when you can't work any longer. Here's what Ecclesiastes 9.10 says. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. For there is, listen to this, no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. You're not going to be able to work when you're dead. You have one, one, one shot at this. You have one chance to work to the glory of God and to serve God. You have one chance. So therefore, everything we do, let it be done to the glory of God with excellence. Work is not our punishment, friends. Work is not our punishment. It should be a pleasure to work for God. And when we have the right perspective about who is our master, about who is our Lord, who, who are we really actually serving, when we have the right perspective on that, it'll transform your entire life. You will not punch in a time clock because you say, well, I'm going to work and I hate my job. You will say, I'm going to do whatever I did yesterday better today because I don't serve my boss, I serve God. And I am going to be the example to the world on how to get it done and to do it with excellence. Enough half-heartedness, enough it's good enough Enough of the, that, that lingo where we're just doing enough to get by. Do what you do, whether, though, whether therefore you eat or drink. Do it to the glory of God. This is a remarkable thing. When you try to find purpose in your work, when you put your hands to the plow and you say, Lord, why am I getting up this morning? Why am I doing this again? I punch the time clock. I work nine to five. I'm working half of a third of my life is dedicated to work. 
essentially. One third is dedicated to work. The other third is dedicated to sleep. The other third, God says, do whatever you want with it, as long as it glorifies him. And you ask yourself, when you get up in the morning, why am I doing what I'm doing? And you say, Lord, it, it, it benefits me, it benefits others, and it pleases God. And if we can do that, if we can do that, you'll go to work tomorrow morning, you'll go to work tomorrow morning, because a lot of us work, go to work tomorrow morning, and you'll actually begin to enjoy it, even though it's hard work. Even though it's hard work. Now, let me just conclude with this last thought. That hard work does not necessarily mean long work. Okay? That does not necessarily mean that we have to work 23 and a half hours a day. That is not, that is not the point. Oftentimes people think, well, because you know, that means to work more. No, it doesn't necessarily mean to work more. At times it might mean to work more. Because there are seasons in life when we have to work more. And that's, that's a whole other story. But when you are working is when you work the very, very best that you can do. You can ask my wife and she would tell you one of my biggest pet peeves is when there's idleness. She would, she would agree with it. She would say, yes, my husband hates idleness. Now, I, now ironically, the ministry involves talking to people and, and doing these things, but I, I can't just sit around either. I got I to gotta get something done. And sometimes it's not always visible. Sometimes you don't always see the, what's, what's, what's happening. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and in the background. But, but I don't like just sitting around. I like, being, I like having a plan. And my, my, I ask my wife all the time, like, so what did you get done? <laughs> She's my wife, and she, she bears this really well. I'm like, what'd you do? What'd you get done? You know? Okay, what's next? I say, what's next? What are we doing? It's, it's not just, can't just be, and ask, ask Rebecca. She's been here long enough to know that I just, I hate that just, you know, we're just sitting around in the kitchen. It's like, okay, well, collectively, we sat around and talked for 25 minutes, and there's five of us in this room. That's a lot of time. You know, that's a lot of time. So I'm really excited, and I want to get to work, and I want to get something done, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to work longer. So we have to be careful and balance this because you also have a family. You also have to be concerned about your health. You also have to make it to church. You also have to do all of these other things. And I get all of that. But when you are working, we should be working. And never look at this as a punishment. It's going to be hard. But you know what? This is God's plan for us. That we work. And we can actually begin to enjoy it. Friends, one of the things that I enjoy so much is sharing the gospel. I enjoy that so much. Now right here, this is you and me and this wallet is our sin. The Bible says that God loves us but hates our sin. A lot of people think that turning over a new leaf, going to a church, getting water baptized, giving money is what saves them. It's not what saves them. The Bible says that the wages of the sin, the wages of the sin is death. Okay? Somebody had to make the payment for this and they couldn't make the payment through water, through walking an aisle, through money, through raising a hand, the payment was someone had to die. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, came to this earth and he died on the cross for our sin. Someone had to make the payment. Now, if you make that payment, you'll die and spend an eternity separated from God. But when Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago and died on the cross, he said, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God not of works. It's not of water baptism. It's not of being good or turning over a new leaf. It's not of raising a hand or giving money or joining a church. It's not of works, lest anyone should boast. There'll be no braggers in heaven. It says, I got here because I did something right. The reason you get to heaven is because you trusted in someone who was perfect, and that's Jesus Christ. And when you, in the quietness of your mind, accept that free gift of salvation, you have what's called eternal life. It doesn't get any better than that. Eternal life. You can't screw it up bad enough to lose it. How does that make you feel? I love that. I can't mess this thing up bad enough. I can do all the bad things. And now listen, I'm not endorsing that. I'm not saying go out and do it. I'm not saying live a wicked life. I'm saying God forbid. But I still can't lose my salvation. And I thank God for that. 
I thank God that he holds me in his, in his hand. That's what it says in John chapter 10. It says that we are kept saved by the power of God unto salvation. And so simple faith alone in Jesus Christ alone is what secures our eternity with him. Marvelous. Marvelous. I pray that if there's anybody here that hasn't done that today, that they'd do it. And I believe everybody here has done that. But it's our responsibility to go out and share that. Now, go out and share that with people. And get them saved. Get them, get them to trust Christ as their Savior. How blessed is it to know that when you die, you're going to spend an eternity with God? Isn't that amazing? It's amazing we can know that. Now, share that with others.